Price falls have slowed from the previous month of December. We're kicking off the year with just a 1% fall in home prices. And as you mentioned, that monthly decline has been shrinking fairly consistently since midway through last year. Um, it is worth noting that the pace of monthly declines, even though they're falling, they're still pretty big in terms of historic price falls. In the 2017 to 2019 downturn, monthly declines were averaging less than half a percent. So to fall by 1% is, is still pretty significant. But the falls aren't that big compared to the huge, huge rises we saw during the pandemic. That's right. That's a really important point. So it's worth noting this decline that we've seen has come off record highs in the housing market and it's come off the back of an upswing of about 29 percent in national home values. So even though there are some fairly dazzling numbers around record price falls, that is coming off a big boom and historic highs. Now, though that, as you mentioned, the rate of decline eased in January, that 1% fall across the country. But do you expect prices to keep falling? I think that prices will probably keep falling. Um, it makes sense to me that, especially given we're expecting to see another rise in the cash rate, that's going to further limit borrowing capacity. It's going to further dissuade buyers who can't keep up with the interest costs or maybe just have some uncertainty amid the high inflation environment. And that's certainly what we're seeing with sales volumes and listings volumes overall, is that buyers and sellers are really keeping their distance from the market at the moment. Now, are you, are you expecting more defaults as interest rates rise? A lot of people doing it tough because of the high cost of living and then they've got higher mortgage costs on top of that as well. It seems possible that that will happen. As to how big of a risk it is to the housing market, I think there's a lot of uncertainty around this. The big uncertainty is going to be about 23% of outstanding mortgage debt is set to roll off of fixed terms over the course of 2023. So you're talking about people servicing massive amounts of debt off the back of expensive property purchases with interest rates suddenly going from sub 2% to five to 6%. So that could cause some people to fall behind on their loans. Uh, we expect that to be at the margins and it's hard to say because if 23% of outstanding mortgage debt hasn't been touched by higher interest rates, that still means a fair chunk of it has been. And people have so far kept up and kept their property off the market. Uh, another piece of data to note is actual non-performing loans, as reported by APRA, were at record lows. Um, their data is lagged and then there's a lag again to check where people are falling behind their loan repayments for more than 90 days. So I think it's just going to be one of those wait and sees as to how big of a risk this really is. So we have seen some recent economic data indicating that the steep rate rises by the Reserve Bank are working. We saw retail sales fall by 4% in December, the first fall in 2022. And also we have seen jobs growth actually start to go backwards. So negative jobs in the most recent unemployment data. So what do you expect the Reserve Bank to do next month? I think it's great to see some signs that inflation is coming off the boil and it makes sense that we could be getting to the tail end of interest rate rises. The RBA are still very determined to deal with inflation quickly um, and with that steep increase in interest rates. So it certainly wouldn't surprise me to see another lift in February, maybe even March. Um, but beyond that, I think we could be getting to the tail end of the rate hiking cycle. And how about the rental market? Again, very important for around a third of the Australian population. So th is the market still tight, about a 1% vacancy rate? Yeah, this was a um, more disheartening stat, I think, to come through the latest figures, is that we've seen a re-acceleration in monthly growth of rent values at 0.7% in January. That was largely driven by unit rent growth across Sydney, uh, where rents increased another 1.4% over the month of Jan, taking unit rents in Sydney up 16% over the year. 
So that really reflects returning overseas migration, where a lot of overseas arrivals go to Sydney, they skew to high density rental markets, um, but it's driving that tightness and, and limited rental availability. There were some signs of hope in the rental market with a third uh, consecutive monthly decline in rent values across Darwin and a second month of consecutive declines across the ACT.